today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Dark Crown, Dark Blood, Hell's Saints 1 6 scale collectible figure. This is product code DB-001 and a new line of collectible figures come to us from the folks over at Dark Crown. We're going to be having a look at the Hell Saints, but of course before we do that we're going to have a look at this really cool box that the figure comes included with. As you can see it's a black box but has a really nice metallic the camera can pick it up a nice metallic uh, skull print on the front with dark blood hell saints one six scale collectible figure down below the back of the box has the website of www.darkcrowntoys.com along with a product code db-001 and a warning choking hazard as this is an adult collectible it's not a toy it's recommended for ages 15 and up Lastly, just before we open up and get the figure out of packaging, you can spin the opened package here and have some nice, really nice artwork here coming to us from an accompanied art book. The figure is actually in there as well. We'll have a look at that as well. And some instructions to boot also. This is a storybook 001. And we just do a quick flip through here. You can see the characters all coming to us from the minds of Dark Crown. Really phenomenal artwork in here also, I must say. And as well as you've got the actual story here. So a nice accompanying piece above and beyond simply just getting the figure and accessories inside. The interior of the box also has this really nice logo here that looks somewhat like a Metroid. With down below it says, To defeat evil we transformed into fear and drive away the darkness with darkness. That comes to us from Dark Blood, Chapter 1. There's your package. Spot's going to take a break now and get this completely out of box. When we come back though, we're going to get a better look at the Dark Crown Toys Dark Blood Hell Saints 1-6 scale collectible figure. There's more anyway guys, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. All right, so we'll get right to this because there's a lot to cover off here with the Hell Saints. First things first, let's have a look at the display base that comes with the figure. Yes, I think one would admit that this is probably one of the coolest looking display stands that we've gotten with a six scale figure. Kind of looks like something you would see from He-Man, maybe like the, oh, I don't know, maybe like Castle Skull sort of thing. On the top, it's got a clear translucent green plastic or translucent plastic, and then there's going to be a green light inside of that. And as well, you can see that there is some really nice sculpted skull work here in the stone face of the display base. I've gone ahead and put in a couple of AA batteries, actually three to be exact, and I've gone ahead and also switched this on. We can take the figure and just slightly move it over to the side. And we'll put the base right there. Because one of the other things that Dark Crown also includes with their figure is a remote control. Uh, right there you've got Dark Crown, Dark Crown toys down below with a on, a flash up, and flash down control. This battery is also already installed so I don't have to worry about changing the batteries for that. Did need double A's for those, didn't need any batteries for this one so you go ahead and just point it to, and actually it might be easier if I hold the base up here, take the on and off button here and switch it on and it lights up all the eye portions in this stone face. And also, additionally to that, all this little area here starts peeking through the additional green light, which is a really nice touch. And then on the top end of it as well, that light is shining very clearly through. Again, it is a translucent green plastic, saying clear plastic before, but a green plastic nonetheless. What you can also do too, is making use of the flash on, flash, or flash up, flash down. You can either make it brighter or you can make it dimmer. And you can dim it all the way down to about, well, to about there and brighten it up again. Now you have to point it, I find you have to point it from the front rather than you can't point it from the top. But if you are standing the figure on top of its display base, you're not likely going to be pointing it up. You're going to be pointing it front, you know, facing the the actual figure. So there's your dim up and your dim down. Fantastic looking display base. Still has the adjustable neck 
and you can take your figure, slide it right down there, and what a phenomenal way of displaying the Hell Saints. Now before we start delving into the other accessories, let's get actually a better look at the Hell Saint because he's got some phenomenal detail. Let's start with his head. Dark Crown has put a ton, a ton of detail and paint into the skeletal uh, headpiece here of Hell Saint. The detailing on the back is very, very nice. I mean, the jacket and the clothing, which we will look at in a second, is also equally done well, but don't want to mask anything to and take away from the head sculpt. Uh, now, the head sculpt, as you can see there, he does have a pair of recessed eyes, which you can also do too. Let's take the head off via magnets on the inside here, and you can go ahead and switch it on. Switching on will give you a pair, not bright mind you, but a pair of green lit eyes. There it is off. There it is on. It would certainly show better a little bit more in the dark. Let's see if maybe we can cut the lights. The lights slightly cut. Let's go ahead and switch the light switch on again. And you can see, yeah, the lights or the eyes do bright, do cast a good bright green light. It seems a little more lost in day in daylight or under lamp light, of course, but it does show a nice piercing green light from the eyes. The rest of the figure looks awesome, though, when it comes to his clothing. Um, he's got this long trench coat, and uh, let's just bring the camera back. There we go. He's got this nice, long, brown, leather-like trench coat, and then they've decoded it out with this phenomenal-looking uh, areas of metal. So he's got a section down, running down the spine portion of his jacket, nice little accent piece on the back collar cuff. On the front here, He's got this nice sculpted face portion here on the side sleeve, as well as some nice, uh, almost sharp, almost slightly sharp to the touch, uh, pointed tips to not only these the front, I guess the front lapel flaps, but also the top collar flaps as well. Nice detailing there also in the sleeve portion as well, and carries also down, even down to the bottom tips. I like how it's got this sharp defined point running at the top, running down to the bottom, the front portion of his jacket. The jacket cannot button up nor Velcro up. Uh, it's basically a completely intended to be a completely opened uh, uh, article of clothing. The side there as well has got some nice, again, looks like it could be a slight face deco here. Looks like also a bit of a spine going on there as well. Very, very nice though. Uh, then inside, I gambled with the idea of actually taking the jacket off, but ultimately I think I might leave the jacket on just for the risk. I don't want to take the jacket off and accidentally pull any one of these pieces off. Luckily, this is being a bit of fluff, but pulling off any of these pieces from the jacket, I would not want to run the risk of doing so. But one would look, one would see that this looks like something that can be completely removed, and inside, some phenomenal looking sculpting on his interior chest work. He's got the same sort of gunmetal coloring to his top collar section right, that runs right underneath his, his uh, head. And if I just remove the face, the face for a second, you can see even now he's got this really nice uh, collar that runs. You almost don't even see it because the, the the skull, the head, covers so much of it. It's a nice stitch work running down the sides of the vest as well. Uh, giving us down to a very lanky looking leg portion uh, of the figure. I like as well that they've given him some cowboy boots. He's, he's got a very lanky... Uh, lanky build, as he should, being that he would be a skeletal character. Uh, some nice touches too as well. He's got uh, a gold chain that runs from the pocket portion, uh, or vest portion if you will, uh, running all the way down to the back section of his pants. A belt buckle there as well. To boot, looks like there's also a face there of perhaps like a, maybe like a wolf or canine creature. Uh, you know, represented there as well. The pants as well as the vest also have that that faux leather look to it, uh, very similar to the jacket, although the jacket doesn't have as much the noticeable, uh, not stitching, but not as much the noticeable impression that it, it looks as much like leather, whereas the interior definitely has more of that, that nice leather, faux leather look to it. 
to accompany an already pretty cool figure, he does also come with this nice top hat here. The top hat has nice detailing there of, looks like almost a skeletal, almost even looks like it's got like a skeletal snake look to it. The other side's got a pair of like fingers kind of clawing their way up the side of the the hat here. The hat is more plastic than the fabric that we've looked at on the figure, but it does still have some really great sculpt to it to make it look like it's actually real fabric. The hat sits very easily on top of his head and gives us a finished look such as this. Something more akin to like a gunslinger uh, look or, or like a traveler of sorts. The figure does really look great with the hat. I don't know whether I'd actually enjoy it without the hat, personally speaking, but I mean, the hat certainly does add a lot of much needed coolness. Not really much needed cool, the figure is pretty cool as it is, but some much needed additional, uh, just more of a somewhat a, akin to a stranger walking to town sort of thing. Really, really like the way this figure looks. Joining along his travels is this super creepy uh, looking skeletal, looks like almost a, a crow of sorts. Um, it's got some nice paint detail done to the under uh, leg portions there, as well as it looks like he's got a pair of eyes running on the actual wing portions. In fact, I find like looking at this, comparing itself to maybe like the crow from uh, Hot Toys, I find actually that the the feathering is done a lot nicer here on this one than I than what was the crow that we ended up getting for that figure. I like also that they've transitioned a little bit of a lighter teal from the tips of the feathers, getting more to a darker coloring, uh, matching more to closer to the the black here, or almost off black, making up the majority of its body. And there's the front skull there. Really super creepy though. Now according to the instructions, the tail is supposed to be adjustable so that you could actually run it underneath uh, your finger, for example. You could attach it to its finger, uh, or I think you can also put, attach it to his sleeve. Uh, the downside though is I do find that the tail is awfully rigid and awfully uh, non-forgiving, it would say, I would say, for adjusting and moving it. For that reason, I'm just gonna actually leave it for a run the risk that something could potentially happen to it. But nonetheless, really a great looking accompanying piece uh, to this figure. Then when you get to the things that come included with him that he can wear, he also comes with this, looks like a scarab uh, amulet decked in gold treatment with a nice green there to round it out. It does have a hinge as well as a real chain, although I can't seem to get the, the actual, can't seem to actually get this to open. And with the clasp and especially the hinge being as small as they are, I don't want to really gamble trying to open that, but maybe I could just take like a screwdriver and just try to hinge that. See if I can actually, see if I can actually get that yeah, it does not seem like it wants to really open up anytime soon. But some really nice detail nonetheless on this little amulet necklace. He also includes a very cool looking cane. Uh, as you can see, the cane is majority in brown with uh, silver or a slight darker silver for the tip as well as this really nice head. The head is that depicted of a skull with some rather cool ram horns coming out from the tops here. I like that they've also, oh, and there's also additionally some gold there as well. I like that they've given a little bit of a darker wash too. So recessed areas such as the eyes, the nose, and then even the under, under bridge area of the jaw gets, shines out a little bit more by having that darker wash added. And there is the cane. As well, he includes a small dagger, almost sword of, it's a little shorter than a sword, I guess closer more so to a dagger, but it's got this interesting tip to it where it's actually pronged rather than coming out to one singular tip. It's slightly translucent in, in a purple plastic. The handle, however, does feel like it's metal. And there's actually a couple of different components that come with him that do that are actually real metal, and this probably being one of them. Here's a close-up look at the handle portion here. Cast in a nice gold, 
uh, metal here and then washed again just to give it a little bit more age to it. Comes with that. But I think by far one of the coolest accessories to come included with this guy and really any six scale figure is this slightly chained portable looking scythe. It's just like a big giant hook and this is actually real metal. In fact the tip the tip of the, the hook portion here does feel like it's a little bit on the sharp side. I love also that it's got this skull that's cast on the side of it. The handle looks glorious. Uh, what you can also do too is take the handle portion off. Uh, so if you so wish just to have it without the chain. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have it with the chain because the chain adds I think personally to it. The chain has a little bit of a hook on the end itself. And again that just kind of tabs into place. Initially I thought and when you make sure, when you put it back in, make sure you line it up because it actually is not the same shape uh, all the way around. Uh, but taking it off, I thought for it, for instance, that it actually would have attached and maybe swapped itself out with the, the handle portion of the cane, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Lastly, the figure comes with a choice of different interchangeable hands. Currently, he's got a pair of relaxed palms, but he also has a pointing finger a more grasping, clawing hand, which is a nice touch addition, as well as a hand suited for holding any of the accessories that we just currently looked at. When it comes to this guy's articulation, let's go actually ahead and take his hat off for that. Uh, he does have a ball joint in the head. Now it actually looks like the ball joint only resides at the base of the neck rather than at the top portion that connects to the actual skull. So it actually only ball joints there. He's got a, a upper ab crunch motion there. Looks like it could have a waist swivel as well. Uh, the sleeves, or in this case the arms inside the sleeves, do hinge out. Forward and back, be very careful though. Again, being very careful that these, uh, especially when you bend the elbow, uh, make sure that this actually doesn't start puncturing into the, the leather section here. So that there is a hinge, but just be very mindful when you're hinging that hand. Uh, he does also have a rotation and hinge, speaking of hinges, also hinge in his hand portion there as well. For his legs, his legs split out, uh, forward and back motion. A top, top swivel cut thigh right there, allowing the thigh to slightly swivel. He does look like he has a double hinge on the knee, as well as a swivel in the foot. Now, the foot, actually, if I can roll it up slightly, he has a cowboy boot, so the boot actually stops, seems to actually stop right around there. So when it does swivel, it swivels actually only by virtue of the fact that it's attaching itself to the lower portion of the leg. The Dark Crown Toys Dark Blood Hell Saints 1-6 scale collectible figure is a glorious looking specimen. It's uh, taking a figure that we really don't know too much when it comes to the character itself, but luckily the folks over at Dark Crown include also a storybook to kind of get you familiar uh, with the characters that represent their universe. Uh, again, this is the, I believe this is the first figure that they're releasing, but they've actually released a couple other figures, or at least I think at the time that you're watching this review, they have released also a second figure as well. And so hopefully we'll be able to pick that up in a, in a future uh, review. In the meantime, really, if you're a fan of Skulls, uh, I was going to uh, say akin to like a Ghost Rider, but if you're really just, just a fan of skulls in general, uh, don't overlook a figure such as this. For all the things he comes with, for all the really cool accessories he comes with, and just for the fact that he is a skull, which really for me, I love skull stuff, uh, this is a great figure to want to pick up and add to your collection. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look again at the Dark Blood Hell Saints 1 6 scale collectible figure from the folks over at Dark Crown. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.